Okay, to start yesterday morning off for the great camping event, we have to start off by putting the wood stove on in the shop. So over in the corner of the screen here, there it is. So there I am dragging out the cords. The cords are stiff, so that's why we don't roll them up. So this is how we get the project going, is we got to plug everything in. So that's what I'm doing there. And the cords come out, and we never roll them up when they're cold because they just break. So this is, a, this is how we do it. Okay, one more cord. I think I got it. Okay, now the cats are in. I double checked to make sure the block eaters are working. All right, let's fast forward to tonight where we had the fun. Okay, to start the video here, we have to cook supper in the caboose first, okay? But I also cheated. We did this before we moved anything out of the yard. And we could have photoshopped or blacked out the windows to show that we're out in the wilderness or on the cat train trail. We did that the other time when we went camping with the Lynn tractor the 1st of November, I mean December. There I am making a mistake again for the first time in my life. But it was too late at night and then it, I have to eat at certain times. Once you get to be old, you have to eat at certain times. Okay, so here I am in the caboose. I set the me phone up and just kind of put it on top of the bed there where the snowshoes are. So if you can't see the snowshoes, have another drink. So I brought the stuff from the house as if we're camping or whatever, but this is a meal I would have cooked on the trail if we had left the yard, but we didn't want to leave the yard till it was officially dark. And of course I filled the cooler full of snow. I should have taken the stuff that I needed out first and then filled the cooler full of snow so the beer, I mean the pop and stuff like that and the milk could stay cold, okay? Also, too, I'm new to this videoing myself cooking, okay? I cook to survive, and there's a fellow in Canada called Steve Wallace, okay? He has a camping video thingy mabob, whatever, YouTube channel with 1.5 million subscribers, yes. And then I found out the guy's from Edmonton, Man Edmonton, Alberta, which the odds are against him for camping because Edmonton's not known as the great camping areas not like British Columbia or the Muskokan area of Ontario, like that's the cottage country. So here's this guy in Edmonton camping and making YouTube videos and being very successful. So that's two things for him, eh? One, he's Canadian. Two, he's in Edmonton. And three, he's also colorblind. So I kind of fell in love with his videos and how he does the business or shows the world how to cook with the basic stuff that you have. He doesn't go on out and buy fancy stuff. He cooks and camps to survive. Okay, just like we do here at the end of the world. But I'm Canadian. I'm marketing myself from the end of the world here. And with the cabooses and sleighs and the lifestyle of being obsolete. And now I can include this cooking uh, for survival. Okay, so now we've got the stove going here. And we're getting out the prefabbed hamburger patties, which you buy in a box from the local store. Okay, there's only one flavor or brand that we can buy. That's it. So but there's no choices here at the end of the world. You walk in the store, what's on the shelf is what you buy. You buy what's on the shelf, not what's on your list, okay? So we kind of know that, and we've lived this lifestyle for 26 years here at the end of the world. Okay, that's a kitchen bag that we're putting into a five-gallon pail so I can collect the garbage, okay? And also, too, those kitchen bags or glad bags, whatever they're called, is also good for if you have to have a poop, Okay. So that's just something we don't talk about, but that's the best way to do it. But I'm putting all the garbage in here instead of in the wood stove, because the wood stove, when you burn garbage in the wood stove, it smells out the frickin' place. It's like a burning barrel, so we don't do that. We have a place where we dump the garbage when we return back to the kingdom, and I made sure the greasy, smelly, whatever, meat wrapper packs or the prefab packs are, you know, out of the way, Okay. So I keep looking up at the roof there because we have the escape hatch of this is the original winter freighting caboose and it has an escape hatch on the top for escaping because when this caboose falls through the ice and into the water it'll float just below the windows. So you have a chance of survival but you can't open the doors because the doors are blocked in by the broken ice chunks. So you have to escape out through the top. And also too we're using these bulb lights they're very annoying i'm colorblind and there's a yellow tinge to everything okay oh look i'm putting more snow in the water pail on the stove because you gotta have the snow in the pail melting to get moisture in the air because the wood stove takes all the moisture out of the air and makes it dry okay so when i'm cooking this here it's warm in the caboose and then we just started this stove well, i don't know what's with this stove that i built it has two settings hot and hot that's it. Hot and hotter, I guess you'd say. 
there is no happy medium you can have the vent closed the door closed everything closed and the thing still burns out of control or hot in there it could be just smoldering away and it's hot in that caboose like most of the time it's 30 degrees so that's like 80 fahrenheit so that's 30 degrees plus 30 celsius so that's like really warm and there i am fixing up my hamburgers we're using cheese whiz because we don't have cheese slices yes no cheese slices at the end of the world this week they weren't on the truck so there i am putting the ketchup on we put some barbecue sauce on mixing it all up we actually got lucky we have some lettuce i'm going to dig that out too and one of the joys of the lettuce arriving at the end of the world is only part of the lettuce is good so you don't actually get a head of lettuce you get a head of lettuce and then you peel all the good pieces off and the rest you give to the dogs the dogs like eating lettuce because that's a treat for them oh here we go look at the flames i'll include a picture at the end screen of the flames there so i'm a pretty good cook we're flame broiling everything it was a little crispy around the edges but i have enough teeth left at my age that i was able to chew it so we did pretty good Okay, this is how not to cook your prefabbed hamburger patties from the store. Okay, and you got to put lots of ketchup and everything on to, how would you say, add flavor. Okay, I'm pushing the snow down to it's slowly melting. And what else are we doing here? Checking the stove. Oh, God, it's just smoldering away. It's not really burning. And here we go back to the stove. Okay, just checking everything out here. Got a slight cough. <coughs> okay, everybody have a drink. Okay, we're doing one shot on this video voiceover i'm not going to stop and play it over because that's nine minutes and 33 seconds of my life so if i stop it and do it again to try and get perfection it's pointless then i'll be asleep by then because i didn't get much sleep in the caboose here because we were up trying to get pictures and everything of the lights and the clear skies and everything so i'm just about got my supper ready here oh look at that i turned the stove down i'm turning it the, actually the wrong way I get the knob is backwards for me I'm English we're stuck in a certain way you turn the knob a certain way okay so there's four patties but I'm only gonna eat two because then the other two go to the house for the dogs yes yes I cook two meals one for me one for the dogs and we share with the dogs that's the joys of how would you say living at the end of the world plus I took the dishes in the house and washed them there it's a lot easier than using the water off the stove or the wood stove there okay I got the door open in the caboose to vent it out you know there I am cutting the dogs burgers in half because we have four dogs here in the kingdom so they each get a piece so two for me two for them which works out to one piece each so there we are we're ready to go now I'm gonna sit down maybe okay shut the door again because it's a little breezy and now I'm gonna sit on the bench okay this is an original winter freighting caboose so all the shelves have little barriers on so stuff doesn't slip and slide around so we're doing pretty good here with this voiceover I think we're getting it I'm not sure what we're doing but I think it's going rather well I can go yeah have a bite it's hot so have a sip of Pepsi have a bite wipe your lips have a sip of Pepsi that's the joys of having a beard you got to make sure your beard is clean because you don't want it all over your your Pepsi okay and the Pepsi I opened it fresh there you can rewind it and see that I didn't put any additives or mix to it or whatever to make it taste even better okay so here we are we just eat the whole burger i left the me phone recording all this and the staff kind of edited it in so it worked out pretty good so uh, i sped it up by two because it was way too long but this is, shows you what it's like to cook in a caboose okay the shelves are all low the counter's low it's hard on my back the older i get but hey we are having fun and that's the only thing we can say oh that burger was good and get some more paper towel I love paper towel more sips of the coke or the Pepsi and back at it make sure everything's clean because I don't have a cleaning staff to clean up after me and there we go it's hard to believe I used to have a mullet haircut at one time now I hardly have any hair oh well I'll get over it emotionally I think and we just keep plugging away here then the video will end with a still photo of the I would just say flame broiling the burger it was just a little crispier crunchy around the edge of where it burnt or whatever but that's okay we'll survive and hopefully this voiceover works out and i'll include a an end or a link at the end screen on that steve wallace's campic because this guy can cook and i kind of liking his videos and i'm learning a lot from him on how to burn or non-burn food and camping but except for we're doing it in a caboose and he does it in a camper or a tent okay let's see if i'm almost finished here i think i'm almost done i'm not sure look at that nice and tidy that's why i don't need a housewife or a cleaning staff to clean up after me 
everything is done now we pack everything away and we should be done this video okay i'll go on to make some more i gotta close the roof hatch there okay i think this is done all right okay it's just about starting time for getting the cats and everything up and running the flag exercise is all excited and happy there i am all right i take off in the book burb to go get the staff look at that okay i should be back right away because it didn't take long and we try not to let people drive in the yard because we don't want any of that road salt or anything brown on our white snow because the sun will melt it quickly so people can't figure out why we get upset when we tell them not to drive in the yard okay there we come back with the book burb and the staff see she's wearing her fluorescent colored jacket so we can see her there we are running around getting everything going all right so the cameras okay the cameras are switching over to night vision so this is working out good i'm using a flashlight because that's actually how dark it is okay one cat up and going known as the hood second cat known as the bismarck bismarck up and going and those led lights from sir rodney sure do work good all right we've got to roll up the cords we got to gather the cords up because we need them to plug the cats in when we're on the cat train trail when we spend the night Ooh, i'm not very good at holding a stick today it must be the alcohol last night okay so now we get everything going here staff's here i don't know where the staff is i think she's getting the gopros and stuff ready okay all right let's go here come on okay getting things going okay just like in the 1930s i mean the 40s or the 50s you got to have the fuel truck so the 39 chevy is the fuel truck so we're using the slip tank on the back to put the fuel in the cats but we're also adding the fuel conditioner and everything like that so it is chilly out because you see all the exhaust fog plus the fact that we actually mix in two stroke oil into the diesel fuel because the fuel today is dry for these old cats these old cats need lubrication on the injection pumps and stuff like that so this is actually going good back up several times to get close enough to the d69u known as the hood we've got to pull it ahead there good to go all right put some fuel in stops getting ready with the gopro she moved her little skidoo ahead and the flag exercise is even happy it was a chilly wind last night but we did it okay everything is going good we've got to park the 39 back in where it belongs that way it can reach to the cords okay a little staff meeting there with the staff okay what's everybody doing now i don't know i was sober last night when we filmed this okay no idea what we're doing what's taking so long oh we're putting the gopro on the td6 known as laverne so that's probably what's taking a long time or taking a while okay we're gonna scoot out of the yard here we're gonna take the one cat out okay all right a little safety meeting oh i gotta go move the skidoo she parked the skidoo too close okay so I go move the skidoo, staff is ready up on the hill, and off we go. There we go. Oh, now she's got to get in head, because I didn't move the skidoo far enough ahead. Keep forgetting how long these cat trains are. Okay, so we're out the backyard, and we're having fun. Okay, I'll stop the video here.
Okay, here's the film footage from last night. Here we are getting ready. Got our lights on, or our flashlights in our jackets. The staff is going to get on her skidoo right here. She is wearing a reflective jacket, which worked out good so I could tell where she was filming, so I didn't run her over, okay? So that worked out pretty good. We fast forward it to 16 times here, and this is about uh, 10 o'clock at, no, 9 o'clock at night, just about 9 o'clock at night, because I picked her up at 8.30. So we got the cat lights on Laverne right over here, okay? He's, there's Laverne right there. He's up and running, so we're going to get on him and put the GoPros. Okay, we're not sure. I think this is as fast as we can go. Okay, we pulled the cabooses ahead so we could fuel them up, and that's working out good. The staff is popping up down in the corner here because she's walking back and forth to the house to get supplies and change out cameras and the GoPros. So this is working out good. So the thing is, is we're going to take off with the deck slays first, and then we're going to run around the loop or whatever and then I walk back to get the second set of slaves okay it's getting dark now there we are putting the GoPro up onto Laverne I don't know if we can see it there we got a bad glare oh that might be off the top of my head the GoPro is now going on the tank okay turn here is that better I don't know it kind of got a glare or glow or whatever okay there we go staff and I are discussing the GoPro, you can see it flashing on top of the tank, so it's good to go. All right, so now as soon as I take off, I'll stop the video here and then wait till I come back to get the other sleigh. All right, I took off with that set of sleighs. Okay, so this little video here, we sped it up eight times to show what the staff and I go through to get these GoPros or the cameras into position. So we just set the GoPro up onto the tanks behind the Laverne and the promo bike sleigh, and the staff is now up on top of a snowbank. We'll be able to see her when we go by on, she's on the left hand side. Okay, I'm up front there moving around. So it goes to show what we're doing to document these cat trains and the sleighs and how they work. And the staff was nice enough to wear a reflective jacket uh, the other night for recording this. Okay, so there we are leaving the kingdom. The staff is there. So now she has to climb down off the snowbank and walk past the sleighs without slipping and falling or ripping her jackets on everything. And then she skidoos ahead and now I'm catching up to her now. It's okay. So there we are going around the corner and there we go. Just bouncy bouncy. Now I have to wait for her to give me the okay. You can see her off in the distance and there she flashed her light. Now I can get going here. Okay, out and about. The whole idea of these sleighs is we want the hairpin corners. Oh, there's a staff on the left or the right. I don't know which way you're sitting on it. If you're in Australia, it's on the right. Okay, now she's got to walk all the way to the front. Skidoo ahead to catch us on the muskeg, okay? But that's the thing. And we're documenting these cats and sleighs and how they self-steer. So how they can go fit through narrow areas in the bush. And these trails, these are original trails for the cat train guys when they moved out of, moved Whoville to here. Plus they went uh, and delivered freight from here to the remote community. So this is pretty good. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Ooh, we just about hit a tree there. We might have to adjust that later on. And I think it's going pretty Pretty good. I'm around the corner and down onto the muskeg because you got to remember we couldn't even get across this. And there's the staff on the left, on the left now. Okay, I'm finally getting it right. Maybe I'm not sober enough to do this voiceover. Okay, I got to stop and wait. And then we go back and we have to adjust the camera with a little GoPro. So that's the only video you ever see of the staff. Okay, starting the camera here because I'm going to walk from the dog trail. So I'm going to enter from the side of the screen over here. I don't know if we got enough talent. Well, somewhere in here. And then I go over and turn the lights on. There I am. 
turn the lights on in the caboose and then we're good to go we got lots of glare here okay now i'm going to take off with the caboose all right so now we'll stop the film footage and then continue on within the bush okay now i came back i got the cat there the first the deck lays down at the muskeg there to stop so i walk back through the bush through on the doggy trail so then i get the welder going or turn the lights on the welder and then i come and get on the d69u known as the hood to take the cabooses away so the staff has now moved into position to film this one okay yes we doing this twice three times we do it doing it quite a several times so we're getting quite the exercise walking okay i didn't think i fast forward or reverse the tape this much but okay, okay, I'll just keep talking away here, educating the world and how the cat trains were. And everybody can see my shiny spot on the top of the forehead there. You can see the reflection here. Okay, there I am. Off I go. D6 there. That looks impressive and how they make the corners. Okay, that's it for this video. Now we'll go to the regular filming. Okay, it took us about two hours to move camp, but we we're getting the film footage. That's what we wanted. We had the GoPros, the staff was riding on the caboose. I turned the fan off here so I could record. That's the fan there. The wood stove is turned right off and it's hot in here. We even have the roof hatch open a bit. Okay, I'll walk this way. We got water boiling or warming here. It's snow warming so we can do dishes, wash our hands, that kind of stuff. So I just made it some tea so I can relax. Okay. And with the wood stove cranked right down, it's almost 30 degrees in here, which is about 
80 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's warm, like too warm. So that's why I'm not going to sleep in here. Okay, let's go check out where we're going to sleep. Okay, this is where I'm going to sleep here tonight. This is what we did the weather stripping on today. So it's nice in here with the baseboard heat and the fan going. Okay, right there. We're at 20 degrees. All right. So I got the laptop set up so I can watch my bedtime movie. All right. This is the back of Beyond. That is a good movie from Australia. It was the highest grossing movie, I think, uh, before Crocodile Dundee. And it's about running the outback. Okay. So there's the original disc or whatever. And it came right from Australia. And then this is the collector's edition. Okay. So we'll be watching that on the laptop. We're charging and charging and charging. Okay. So... <laughs> We gotta charge up all the cameras so we can enjoy. So I'll be nice and comfy in here in this little room with the weather stripping on the door. So this is perfect, okay? Let's try the Samsung to see what we can get for dark pictures or nighttime pictures. <laughs> 